Okay, we're ready to look at how we're going to get the data from our XB and our PLC into our database. In this case, we're actually going to add a different database. We're going to look at an, a MySQL database. And if we notice uh, from the actual software that's installed in our FIO database, that we have a connector for a Postgres database. So what I'm going to do here in this video is to show you how to add a further configuration to Node-RED to use with our previously configured database. Before we do that, I just want to show you that instead of the complete message object, um, which I'll open up here, uh, and we'll see that in the debug windows soon, I'm going to change that. Well, I'll wait, so, the, so the entire object, let's just change it to the... Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll live with this. Instead of the message payload that's in the original format, we've modified it. We've modified it to make it a lot simpler in order to store in the database. So let's see what that looks like. We'll just trigger an event. Okay, we've got both nodes. Let's see, let's see. So it's the top one is the complete object. The bottom one is just showing us the payload. See by the orange dotted line around it. Let's let's remove the selection from that so you can see that it's highlighting the node that was that the message came from, or the debug message came from. The original payload object was a more complex, it has a type, it has the remote 16 address, value for RSSI, and in here, buried in the data is actually the data that we want. Whereas here, from the second node, these two functions, which have no code in them at all, they're just simply um, a switch node, how it works and a change node this is how it works which do exactly the same as this JavaScript code here so instead of having to write the code you can simply modify these two node types they do exactly the same thing but what that does here is it we create our new payload um, which has uh, the uh, remote 16 address as the first member of this array, the second member is zero, and the third member is the timestamp. So if we clicked on it, as you can see, it's actually a proper array. We can see that it's uh, from the number to accident to the date time stamp to another format to a hexadecimal representation. It's the time. That's what we're going to store. So how do we do that? Let's clear the decks. Let's look at the hamburger menu let's add let's manage our palette and let's add some nodes so all the nodes these are ones that are installed we can look here we can find out we can actually update the we can update a couple of them that we're using anyway but let's leave them as they are let's install search for nodes that have got mysql in their names okay looks like the top one's going to be a good one this one i'm not so sure about and i know that this one's going to be important as well because we're trying to a format this one's possible look we're we're going to be working on this one we don't need that normally but um, we're going to add that one as well so we'll look at installing these two nodes if we don't know what they are we can follow this link and it will open up a tab to node red mysql and actually talk about the node we can see it on npm or github and it tells us how to access the, the database so it tells us that it will allow sql injection so be careful out there. The message topic must hold the query for the database and the result is returned in the message payload. Okay, so here we go. So this is how we prepare uh, a query. So in, in fact here we can see that the payload has, is an array and then insert into users, user ID, username, values and return message. Then we can use name parameters like this. We're going to use this, this first format here, I would imagine, because our payload is already in this format. Our topic is actually the um, the um, the ID, but we'll, we'll get to that. So, let's see about installing it. So we go back to our node right here. We'll add that. We'll add that one too. We're going to uh, install it. Let's click on that one as well, see if we can install them both at the same time. 
is that a SQL string format? And I did that. So now we have our installed nodes. We should have some extra ones at the bottom. SQL string for and node red MySQL. Okay. Let's see how do we use them. We we'll, won't bother with the string concant. Oh, sorry, the string uh, escaping at the moment. We'll look, and here we have it. We have a MySQL node. We need to configure it. There's a red triangle. We need to do a couple of other things as well. We need to create, in fact, we need to create a topic for that. So the topic has to be the query. So now we have it open. Let's look at the information. The topic must hold the query, and the result is returned in the payload. The payload can contain an array of values to bind to the topic. Well, that's what we've got. We've got a payload here from this one that's got the members to bind to the topic. So I think we might need to use the uh, the other node as a very simple way of creating the topic. SQL string format, that was another one. Let's see what does it say about it. Uh, okay, does it have a way of... Oh, okay, this is great. The result goes to the message topic. So, quite possibly use question mark as a placeholder for all variables. Uh, the variables required payload, payload.foo. Okay, we'll just try looking at the whole payload. All right. So, what format does it want to be in? Instead of select, we want to in, we want to insert. Insert into um, well, it's going to be the five user. Um, I think it's called table events. Okay. We want to put the format of the okay. So let's use that. We'll just we'll, we'll put it in here. Sorry, I need to go back to the right screen. Insert into events. Uh, event. And the value is just the payload itself in JSON. Looks like it needs the, the string. So in this particular case, I've not made it a string. Do I need to bother with that? So let's get rid of the, let's get rid of this. We'll say done. So, before we actually connect and, uh, and to our database, let's just have a look at what this looks like. We might as well create a new message object. Another debug for the entire message to see if our topic's been changed. Let's change that to the complete message object. Done. Deploy, which should say that this one might complain about this one being not properly configured. Let's look at putting these in the bin. All right, we've got listening. We need to trigger an event. We want to see essentially what's what's gone to this one. Let's trigger it. So now we have okay, this one. Well, okay, great. Into into event values, it's actually taken the values out of there, which is great. Except I want to change it into a an actual object. Now it's possible that uh, events are JSON. Do you know what? We'll find out if it if it works or not. Otherwise, I need to insert a string because the I need to stringify that's what's the right thing to say wanting to stringify the json array and insert the entire array as a json object 
So our topic, our payload, potentially needs to be a in JSON format. All right, let's see if we can be a smart Alec and just see if we can if that applies if that will actually um, if this function converts between the JSON string and its JavaScript object representation so does that have to be in the payload let's try it let's stick it in here yes the property the payload turns into a string Let's deploy that. The database is not configured. Yes, correct. And let's just see if now instead of the yes, we have now got a stringified version. We've now got it as JSON, J S O N, rather than an actual object. So this is what's going to go in the payload of that object is the original payload where your data comes from and now the payload's been turned into a string and so the insert into events event in the events table the event column the value is just is a is a representation of that object in json format so i'm happy with that now so now let's configure our database I'll make that a bit longer so we can see I'm going to just drop it between the two. I'm going to configure it. Add a new database. The host. This is where things get fun. The host is going to be the machine on the network that's my computer. So I'm just going to confirm its IP address and then we shall carry on with this. A few things that we can actually do. We know that it's not this the default port it's this port we know that the user is called fiab we know the password is fiab okay it's warning me that it's not a secure connection that's correct i can't spell it the database is fiab tables Times I'm going to leave blank. The name of this I'm going to leave blank. All I have to do is confirm what my IP address is, my local one. And let's deploy that. We see connecting. Hmm. Yeah, connected. Great. Okay. So let's put this in the bin. So now we should see the return if there is a return from an insert which I don't think there's gonna be but let's just try it of course this one we might as well see what the payload is in this case and we'll see what the entire message object is in this in this case so let's create an event <laughs> unknown column event in field list that's great okay so let's see how I managed to make a muck of that okay it's interesting here we get the error on the screen as well as as well as to the uh, to the note but that's what the database has, re has returned so let's go back here we'll look at why that possibly is do you know what I didn't apply it all the column events to event apply finish so now we have a table called events with the column names of, of ID and event. Let's go back to node red. Let's put those in the bin and let's trigger another reading. Great. That was okay. We got a response of okay. I don't know if we got anything from this particular node. I think it must have just echoed that straight through. So it's essentially the payload object. Okay, now we get, we got some information back. 
it says that uh, we have inserted a one uh, insert ID one, a service status two, one account one, no message. It's true. Changed rows zero. Okay. I guess what would be nice to find out would be um, what's now in the events table. Let me see the topic. Okay, so let's just see what's in the events table. I think we just do select star from events. So let's have some SQL. We will trigger it like this. And we might as well use the same connection. And we might as well use the same response object. So let's turn off a few of these while I remember so it doesn't get too cluttered. Uh, instead of a timestamp, we'll just insert a very simple. Ah, interestingly, here we can actually put topic in this one. So we could actually, uh, I think, leave the SQL one blank and let it let the SQL uh, string function properly escape those things. But we'll actually might as well write the topic in here and see how that goes. Payload, we'll leave an empty payload. The uh, topic is uh, select star from events. We can repeat it or we can leave it blank. We'll just do done. We'll do name query um, events query. Let's just have a look at a glance over this one. Events query. The SQL result to message topic. No result. Hopefully I won't overwrite it. Um, perhaps we could look at I don't know. Let's let's find out. Let's see if it says anything about this. Alright, this is let's let's just leave it. And deploy it. See what happens. Okay, so rather than create an event before we do that, let's just look at this debug list. Let's clear it. Let's try and trigger empty query. Yeah, pretty much. Let's move that. Let's move that topic. Let's stick it in here into the query we can't turn that off can we no we just have to leave it as that um, done we'll deploy again get rid of that message and let's try that again let's see what we've got Okay, RD1 event as we wanted it to be. A string representation of a, well, it's a JSON object. It's JSON. That's it, JSON. Give ourselves a round of applause. <laughs>